Hello everyone. On today's topic, we are going to see measurement and measurement calibration. So while for measuring equipments, why calibration is required? So the calibration is the activity of checking by compa comparison with the standard, the accuracy of a measuring instrument of any type. So it may also include adjustment of the instrument to bring into the alignment with the standard. So if it is uh, digital equipment or normal equipment. So we have to do calibration before whenever we are using it. So you can see this image. So both tape are, show, are same brand, but if you see the deviation in the measurement, so if you see that concentrate on two inch, so you may, you may see the deviation. So how it is to avoid this. So there is an fixed uh, standard. So it is available in all, uh, laboratories so which is whom they are performing that uh, calibration so against that they will check your tape is uh, fit for use or not so we have to use those calibration equipments for measuring okay next where to calibrate so calibration has to be performed under the NABL accredited lab. So that is National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Certificate. So whatever the equipments like cloth tape, metal tape, weighing, uh, weighing balance, uh, screw parts, vernier caliper, GSM, GSM cutter, GSM weighing scale. So what are all the measuring equipments? Okay, all the equipments has to be calibrated under this NABL accredited laboratory. So in India, currently there are more than 2,500 plus accredited laboratories. So you can check uh, what are the uh, uh, laboratories nearer to your location and you can give there for calibration. Okay. Next. When should you calibrate your measuring device? So whenever you are purchasing a new equipment, so normally they will say it is validity for one year. So or else if you want to ensure then periodical calibration is required, whether it is monthly, quarterly or annually based on your usage. So why it is required? The hidden cost and risk associated with uncalibrated measuring devices could much higher than the cost of calibration. So therefore, it is recommended that the measuring instrument are calibrated regularly by a reputable company to ensure that errors associated with the me uh, measurements are in the acceptable range. So if you are not calibrated, so for, a, uh, for example, uh, weighing balance, uh, the weighing scale is not calibrated. So initially, whatever the product you are weighing, it is showing 500 grams. But if you are measured along with a calibrated weighing scale, it is showing 480 grams. Let's see if it is a small product or less value product it is not going to affect much. If it is high value, garment, uh, high value product like gold, diamond or any other uh, metals. So it is going to affect for each and every gram. So to avoid that losses to in if you calculate that loss cost it is lesser than the what you performed calibration so calibration cost is lesser than your loss so it is recommended to perform calibration next so what are all the steps has to be followed while calibration so whenever you purchased equipment or your calibration equipment check it is it should be defect free like damages torn or paint or print peel off on the uh, written numbers such kind uh, such things should not be there and you have to perform calibration against the standard instrument like the standard scale or uh, weighing uh, dead weight to ensure that uh, calibration for digital measuring equipments so there will be a tolerance. If measurement is falls out of the tolerance, possibly you can adjust the instrument. Okay. After adjusting, if it is performing, okay, then you have to use those machines. Uh, if the tolerance is not in the acceptable range, then it is not usable. Okay. So whatever the documents uh, is provided from the calibration uh, certified agency, then you have to uh, keep it safe for that uh, till the time of validity. <clears throat>
So this is the example of a calibration certificate. So one is for uh, measurement tape and another one is for uh, weighing balance. So in that uh, in that rip, uh, calibration certificate, uh, equipment number, validity venue calibration and validity till. So everything that is mentioned. So you can save this along with the uh, instrument or you can keep separate. Next, what is measurement? So measurement is the act of determining a target size, length, weight, capacity, or other aspects of the product. Okay. So normally uh, measurement specification mainly comes from the buyer. So based on the garment, so we will receive the tech pack from the client to get the actual size of each and every part of the garment. So that is point of measurement. So garment measurement techniques have been designed and to show how and where to measure a wide variety of different measurement points and finishing garments across the product area. So whatever the tech pack we are receiving from client. So you can see uh, what is measurement point of measurement values and how to measure it will be there. Next is these are the critical measurement points. Okay. For, uh, male, female and kids. So normally we will focus on chest, waist, hip, inseam and body length. So this is the critical measurement points based on this, whether it is top or bottom, uh, rest all measurement points will be derived. So, okay, now whatever the measurement it is fixed for one size. So then grading will be decided. So for that grading is based on the size, fit, shape, how that physical appearance is required and what is the current trends and nature of the product usage. So based on this grading has been decided. This is the example for point of measurement with grading. So it is for top. Let's see half chest okay, at underarm excess is 49, SS 51.5 and 54. So the grade uh, used here is 2.5 centimeter and they provided tolerance also one centimeter. Similarly, they made the grading evenly for all the point of measurement and the graded value also mentioned. And for that grading, what is the tolerance also mentioned in the spec sheet? Next, so based on this uh, measurement chart, we are going to perform measurement. So before performing measurement for each and every garment, we have to keep the garment on the flat, garment flat on the table, remove all the looseness and wrinkles on the garment. <clears throat> uh, always use flat table instead of inclined table. Okay, don't disturb the piece for each and every point of measurement unless it needed. Once you place the garment flat on the table, try to cover all the point of measurement in that uh, way itself. Okay, then keep a spec sheet and how to measure guidelines along with you for your further reference. Let's say critical point of measurement for T-shirts. So normally chest. So here, if you see the values may be based on flat or circumference. Normally they will provide half chest flat or circumference. So based on this, we have to measure. So chest, half waist and bottom measurement, total length then shoulder length. So when you are measuring shoulder length, make sure that shoulder length is for one uh, side or across shoulder. So across shoulder is, if you see from point G to that uh, right side of the shoulder. Okay. Next is front width and back width. So for measuring front width and back width, placement is required. So how far it is from HPS, let's say it is 18 centimeter, then 18 centimeter from HPS, then we have to measure front length or sorry, front width or back width. 
then uh, shoulder slope or slant <coughs> sleeve length so for sleeve length whether it is from center back or from shoulder point that we have to ensure half bicep armhole then it is for armhole it is curved measurement or straight measurement neck width and neck width whether it is including uh, neck rib or excluding neck rib that we have to look on in that uh, measurement chart sleeve opening okay, these are all the basic uh, point of measurement for uh, t-shirt <clears throat> and next is for uh, trouser okay uh, critical points is waist seat tie inseam front rise back rise knee and bottom hem so waist so normally they will provide waist flat and waist extra uh, extended so if it is a elastic uh, elastic uh, waist then waist extended will be there seat for measuring seat uh, position is required so how far it is 20 cm including waistband or excluding uh, excluding waistband so that is required to measure seat and uh, thigh so how uh, how far from the crotch point so that measurement whether it is exactly on a crotch point or one or two centimeter below the crotch point so based on that we have to measure in seam front rise and back rise uh, whether it is including waistband or excluding the waistband that we have to check knee for that knee also placement is required whether it is from uh, waistband or from in seam so based on the measurement we have to measure then bottom in Next one is tolerance criteria. So how they are fixing the tolerance for each and every point of measurement. So tolerance in textile is the amount of acceptable variation from the specified measurement uh, from which you can cut out pattern pieces. Okay. Or add components or sew seams. So tolerance is measured either in uh, inches or centimeter. Okay. So for tolerance can be stated by <clears throat> four tolerance zones. So these from tolerance are straightness, flatness, circularity and cylindricity. Okay, based on this tolerance has been fixed. So normally they will do either half of the grading or fixed uh, tolerance based on the shape or uh, fit. And tolerance may be based on point of measurement and each and every fit okay so if it is slim fit tolerance may be different and if it is uh, normal fit it may be different so based on the uh, style shape fit aspect appearance so the tolerance has been fixed okay so this is an example for measurement against the specification so for uh, s size the spec for the half chest flat is 51 centimeter and whatever actual value found in three me measured three pieces has mentioned uh, in plus 0 0.50 and plus 0 0.5 of the deviation so whenever the tolerance uh, is provided better if we have to highlight the deviated points if you see the neck width so the tolerance is 0.5 for S size in uh, S3 measure piece we found plus 0.8 same for sleeve length upper half sleeve width then cuff length center front so these are all the points which is deviated and it is highlighted in red so it is useful for uh, whoever reviewing the report it is easily visible so if it's beyond the tolerance better to highlight either in red or appropriate color which is as per based on your requirement okay so whenever the deviation is captured try to capture it along with uh, how you measure okay and you can show the actual deviation value also if it is center front sleeve length or hip waist whatever it is try to attach supporting digital so it will easy for the person who is reviewing your report thank you for your participation if any uh, questions is there then let me know
Thank you.